Okay, welcome everyone. I think we can get started. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar on coronavirus and your job search. My name is Michelle Rapp and I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Career Strategy in the Office of Alumni Relations. A quick housekeeping note, the participation in this webinar will be via the chat box option. If you see the purple arrow in the lower right corner of the page, if you click on that and click on the little bubble, that's where you can participate in the chat. We're facing an unprecedented and uncertain time that impacts us on many levels. Northeastern's Office of Alumni Relations is here to help you be resilient, informed, and connected to our alumni community and to support you in your career. I'm very excited to have Noel Gross here to share critical information regarding job searching during this uncertain time. Noel is a career strategy expert and founder of Noel Gross Career Strategy a one-stop shop for job seekers hoping to navigate a pain-free job search and land a job in less time than the average. She has a background in executive recruiting and her mission is to help people do what they love. Noelle brings a shrewd headhunter, headhunter prowess, fun-loving practical perspective, and an element of freshness to the career world. We're very excited to have her here today to share her perspective. All right, thank you so much, Michelle. And before I continue on, um, can you hear me okay? Yes, great. Okay, <laughs> excellent. All right, well, so excited to be here with you all today uh, to help you navigate these really uncertain times. And before we jump in, I always like to start by sharing a little bit about my background, my story, and why I'm here um, teaching you about the job search today. So uh, my story really starts with a defining moment in my life, and that was a few years back, when I graduated from business school. Um, and I just wanna make sure, to, did you see the slide advance? Are we in business, Michelle? Yes, you're good. Okay, excellent. I'll just keep trucking right forward then. So a few years ago, graduated from business school and um, I had taken time out of my career to go back to school, to top up my career, to ideally uh, make a career change land a promotion, make more money, and um, really change the world. I had really big dreams. Um, but I found myself in a bit of a different place at the end of graduation. I was unemployed and immediately found myself in the job search. Um, and there was it was at this time that I learned one of these universal truths about the job search. There's nothing fun about it. The job search is just not a fun place to be. And I, there's a lot of reasons for that. I think uh, uh, really the main reason is that there's just such a ton of uncertainty. You never really know what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. You're getting rejection emails and sometimes, you know, the, they're automated rejection emails to kind of pour salt on the wound. And, and ultimately I experienced a really discouraging job search. I really you know, ended up in a kind of a very hopeless place um, and struggled in my job search for about six months and eventually landed a job as an executive recruiter, a retained uh, search consultant. And in the firm that I uh, worked for, we were recruiting Fortune 5, uh, we were recruiting talent, top talent for Fortune 500 companies. And so this, this job really gave me quite an education in the world of hiring and recruiting. I learned what companies were looking for when they hire top talent. Um, I learned about the hiring process, you know, how, how savvy job seekers can really maneuver it um, to their benefit. And I also learned something that was a bit more glaring um, to me, given the situation or the situation I had just come out of, a really rough job search. I learned what mistakes job seekers were making in the job search. And I started to realize this because I would receive hundreds of resumes a week and they would all end up in my trash. And it wasn't just people who were early in their career, um, it was people across the full spectrum of their career, people all the way up to senior board executive level. And so I realized there was there was this problem in the in the job search market. And so um, so this really struck me. And, and I one thing I really enjoyed in my role as a recruiter was um, helping to educate the candidates I was working with through the hiring process, helping guide them along, and also helping people understand how to best work with recruiters. And eventually I decided to leave recruiting. And because of the insights I had gained into the hiring side, I experienced a much less painful job search 
than those of my past. I knew what to do because I had had this education. And as a result of that, I was able to land one of the first jobs I applied to within a month of applying. The job was a career change. It was a step up. I had navigated a very intense interview process. I negotiated more money and I beat another candidate who was more qualified. And so I realized that there is uh, an art, if you will, to landing a job. And so um, eventually decided to leave that to start my own company and started ngcareerstrategy.com where my mission is to really create a short, pain-free, hope-filled job search for job seekers. And I do this by simplifying the job search um, through providing job seekers with the tools, the hiring insights, and the strategies for landing a job, hopefully in less time than the average, because uh, that's, that's one of the downsides of the job search is the amount of time that usually people are spending in it. Um, some of the ways that I help job seekers is we do everything from resume writing to LinkedIn writing and coaching. Uh, career coaching, job search coaching, interview coaching, and then finally group training. And then the fifth kind of thing that we are starting to do is we're launching a membership community. It's supposed to launch this week, so I'm very excited about that. And this will be a place for people who um, who, who are more interested in do-it-yourself job search and want to access my workshops and tools and things and do that do it on their own. So that's a little bit about me and what I do. Uh, let's jump into the new normal, this, this new state that we all find ourselves in. We are living in this new normal. And this is a place I'm sure none of us could have even have fathomed a few short months ago. COVID-19 continue to, continues to spread throughout the world. And without a doubt, there are three areas of our lives that will be severely affected by this new normal. First, you know, the entire world has taken extreme cautions around protecting their health. So there's a lot of uncertainty around what's going to happen with our individual health and with kind of the health of those around us. Second, the economy has taken a hit. Um, last week, I saw 6.6 .6 million people filed for unemployment in the U.S. And um, the whole world is kind of on pause, waiting to see what happens um, in, in, in the world of, of, the, of the economy and employment. Um, and thirdly, uh, your career. This will no doubt impact your career if it hasn't already. But I believe in the possibility to transform this time of crisis into a time of career opportunity, not career uncertainty. And I, I truly believe that, I truly believe that there is an opportunity at hand. What, whatever your career situation is today amidst this pandemic, you have an opportunity should you choose to embrace it. And I'm not saying that the road ahead will be easy, and I'm not diminishing the terrible fact that you know people are dying needlessly, um, but I am saying that now more than ever with regards to your career, you are going to be faced with a choice to persist with hope or to be consumed by the gloom and doom around you, okay? And I wanna take this one step further. I wanna ask you to take a moment and simply reflect on your job prior to COVID-19 or your job search status if you, if you weren't employed prior to COVID-19. And I want you to be real honest with yourself. Um, if you can honestly say you were completely fulfilled by your work and thriving, then yes, it may be really hard to see a silver lining or an opportunity in all of this. If you were not totally fulfilled in your work, then perhaps the opportunity that you can view this through is the lens of, of a fresh start um, with your career. You know, perhaps you had hit a career plateau, or perhaps you were settling for a job below your full potential, or maybe even feeling a little too comfortable in your job, kind of going through the motions, feeling disengaged. And for some of you, perhaps you really just hated your job. And, and the, the only reason you were staying was the paycheck and the benefits. Um, and so if any of this was the case, you know, and again, you have to take a real honest look at kind of where you were coming from, perhaps, and, and I might be really bold to propose this, but perhaps this could be the thing your career needed most, an opportunity to change. And, and I can speak to this from experience. So there were two times in my career where I experienced crisis. And in both situations, I came out much better and ended up on a life-changing career path, um, one that I could not have even designed myself if I tried back in the day. So the first crisis was that uh, when I graduated 
from my MBA. It was around the time of the recession, the, the recession of 2008. And people there were not hiring MBAs. I wasn't going to get my dream job. And the opportunity to be a headhunter presented itself. And I found myself in one of those situations maybe you found yourself in before where you have a job opportunity before you and you're really not sure if you want it. You don't, you're sure you don't want it, but you're not sure if you should take it. And so I took it, I took that opportunity and that really determined um, and laid the foundation for where I ended up today for the career, the career path I'm on today. And the second crisis that I was faced with was um, after I left head, head hunting um, and was working in the corporate world, I went through a layoff um, and it was shocking. It was completely devastating. Um, all the emotions you feel when you lose your job, I experienced them all. Um, but when I was able to take a step back, I realized that it was the best thing that had ever happened to me because I, I did not love my job. And this ultimately led to me starting my own business. And so today, I'm going to show you what the coronavirus means for your job search and how you can make the most of this unexpected hiring slowdown. I am going to show you the possibility over the impossibility in these times of trial, but it will be up to you to embrace this approach or not. So the agenda for this morning or this afternoon is what to expect and how to plan for career uncertainty. We're going to talk about how to shift your search strategy based on where you are today. I'm going to share with you the top, what I call five big ticket job search action items for you to tackle during the quarantine. So you may be all, you know, uh, bolted up at home, but that doesn't mean you can't take some serious action and make some serious progress in your job search. And finally, I'm going to share some key resources for staying on top of hiring in your industry uh, kind of throughout the presentation. So expectations and planning. There is a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen in the market after this is all over with. And for many people, this creates an added level of anxiety or fear. And the best way to manage this uncertainty is by setting some boundaries around it so you can have somewhat of an idea about what to expect and then of course prepare accordingly for both the best and worst case scenarios. Now I want to preface this before I get into the best and worst case scenarios I want to preface this by saying this is not a new concept to the job search. Okay the job search is and always will be an environment of uncertainty that is totally out of your outside of your control. And if you've been in the job search, you know this, it's totally outside your control to some, to some extent. Now, I wanna do a comparison just to show you, um, you know, the differences or similarities between the regular search and a crisis search. So in a regular job search, it's highly competitive. There's a lot of uncertainty on the timeline and the outcome. In a crisis search, it's going to be highly competitive and even coming out of the crisis, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty around timeline and outcome. Okay, so I want to kind of put this fear, if you have this fear of uncertainty and this is causing anxiety, I want, I want to help you kind of put that, that anxiety to bed because it's, it's something that is common to both the regular job search and the job search that we're going through right now. So what is, what is the worst that we could expect? Okay, and again, we want to set some boundaries so that we know you know, the confines um, in which we're going to be searching. Okay, so a re recession, um, a lot of talk of recession, and this could be uh, worse than than the one many of us have experienced a few few years back. Uh, to expect the worst, you would expect that you may be in the job search for one year minimum, maybe longer, but it could be a really, it could be a long haul, okay? It could be, it could be a long job search. If, especially if you're coming from an industry that is taking a hit right now, your ideal career move may not be possible. So maybe you had grandiose dreams for where you were going next in your career. Um, it might not be possible. Okay, so that could be a worst case scenario. And then financial hardship. So some people will experience severe financial hardship as a result of all of this. Um, this, this is a reality. The last worst case scenario that I want to present is death. Okay, and this is becoming the reality for a lot of people. And I don't say this to be dramatic or to scare you or um, to kind of think doom and gloom, but 
I, I think we could all agree that given the, the bullets, you know, I've shared prior to death, um, they, they don't seem so bad, right? When, when you frame it like this. So that's the absolute worst case scenario. So what is the best case scenario that, that we should prepare for? Okay. Um, so the, the scenario we would prepare for is that there are minim minimal after effects, that there's a market uptick and this creates job surpluses and more opportunities in your target space. And the absolute best case scenario is that your target companies are eager to hire after COVID passes and quick. And when they do, you need to be ready to apply. So you want to be prepared for the best case scenario. So it's really time to hunker down in your job search and turn up the volume on your job search to make sure you're properly prepared. Yes, the coronavirus, it, it's adding a complete, completely new layer, layer of complexity to the mix, but it's also going to be the ultimate job search test. It's going to, it's going to require you to step up your game. And the good news is that if you can handle this job search, you can handle probably any job search going forward. So let's switch gears and talk about where we are today and how we set ourselves up for success going forward before we dive into specific job search tactics. So if you were or are interviewing, um, and I know some people are, some companies are continuing on, um, if you're in play, it should go without saying that everything will likely be 100% virtual going forward. And this is this is not news to us. Um, this is simply um, kind of the world we're living in right now. And so to be prepared for this, you want to be extra comfortable with video interviewing. Make sure your technology is in good working order. You have a background that's um, you know appealing, and you are camera ready. Okay. So this is just this is this is the new normal in terms of interviewing online meetings. If you're in play, but you're not feeling so good. So say you have an interview coming up and you feel like you're coming down with something and potentially it's the coronavirus. Um, now is not the time to be brave and to say, you know what, I'm going to have this interview anyways, um, because you will perform your best if you aren't feeling your best. So it's not worth risking it. In this situation, you want to ask the employer to reschedule and employers more now, now than ever before, are going to be very sympathetic. They're going to understand. Okay, everyone gets it. So don't feel that you have to kind of be brave and, and put your best foot forward in that situation. Um, and then there are going to be many of you who are or perhaps in play, but all of a sudden there's this non-responsiveness from the employer kind of mid-process. And I met with a group of job searchers this morning, and that seemed to be a very common scenario that people have found themselves in. So if you were mid-process with your interviewing, uh, you want to be sure and check in or follow up. So you want to just make sure you do it just once initially um, to number one, get a sense of where the company's at. Um, but the tone that you should be setting when you reach out is one of certainly understanding and patience uh, because, you know, acknowledging that this is a very difficult time. So they don't think that you've been living in a bubble for the past month. Um, so the follow up is still OK, um, and you want to let them know that you're still interested when when hiring has resumed as as per normal standards. Um, this is not a time to be a follow up stalker. Uh, this is simply time to kind of just make sure you check in, make sure you kind of are monitoring these companies for when they do start to hire again um, and that you do have a line of, of communications kind of with with your key stakeholder. If you're unemployed and your finances were kind of dwindling away prior to the coronavirus, you are likely under a tremendous amount of financial stress. Okay, so this, this is a scenario that some people will find themselves in. And you need to have a financial backup plan. Okay, if you don't, this will become a barrier to your job search. The first part of any successful job search, whenever I'm working with a client, is that of setting, setting our priorities. Okay, and if money is a priority and having the money coming in um, and that's not being met your search will be sabotaged down the line it will be nearly impossible to perform the key job search functions while also trying to manage the anxiety associated with not being able to pay the bills okay so you want to make sure you have some income coming in or a way to have some income coming in and so 
what you should be focused on if this is you is you want to refocus on landing a side gig first then proceed with your search so make sure you have some money coming in before you shift gears back into a full-on job search um, in a different direction so there are a number of and this, this is just a sampling um, i'm sure of some of the online or uh, remote work opportunity websites but um, upwork is is a great website if you're looking for project work um, even consulting gigs sometimes uh, flex jobs and then more of the creative work would be uh, you could advertise on fiverr and then of course craigslist um, sometimes does have local opportunities um, that can be handled remotely so definitely a good idea to get put a, a remote uh, work in, in place if you were searching aggressively prior to the pandemic um, i would say now is a good time to take a little time off to recharge your batteries and stay healthy and I'm talking about if you were actively networking, act, actively interviewing, actively doing everything in your power to land a job, um, really a 40 hour week job prior to this, you want it, you want to rest up. You want to take a little break. Um, you, the job search isn't going anywhere. So depending on how you've been searching up until now, you just want to kind of relax at least for a week or a couple days. If you can't, if you can't stop for a week, um, an aggressive job search, it's great to a point that there's only so much you can do right now. And you don't want to get totally burnt out so that you can't kind of regroup and, and, and put your best foot forward once the dust settles on Corona. If you're employed, um, but your industry is taking a hit, now would be a good time to think about making a career pivot into an industry that is hiring or that will be hiring in the future. And I've listed some of the obvious candidates, um, you know, just based on, you know, if you do some simple searching, kind of what, you know, what they're showing in the news, who's hiring right now, kind of crisis related um, industries and companies, but there are also many more out there. So it's not just limited to this. There are other companies I know that are hiring that, you know, have, from an from an kind of first glance do not have a very obvious connection to kind of being a uh, crisis remedy type industry so I, I you know don't feel limited to these industries but definitely think about okay taking your role and and pivoting it into a different industry um, that's gonna probably be a good plan going forward so let's move into some of the job search action items that you want to be performing while you're while you're sitting at home while you're experiencing this downtime and this is a really big opportunity so this is one of those opportunity moments um because you all of a sudden have all this time you have time to tackle what i call the top five most overlooked job search game changers and these are five areas that if tackled correctly will give you a significant advantage over the competition once hiring picks up um, these these five areas we're going to go over they're usually a place that um, job seekers are are you know sometimes employing in their job search but not to the full extent okay they because they require that time and a lot of times i get the sense that if a job seeker feels that they're not looking for jobs online like going through the, the act of physically looking for jobs online scrolling job boards and if they're not applying and submitting tons of resumes and tons of applications that their time is being wasted in the job search and that is quite simply not not the case at all in fact that's the worst strategy you could have okay and i always have to throw this in here because um scrolling on online job boards all day long for eight hours a day hitting the apply button it's just not a strategy okay it's the quickest way to lose steam in your job search okay so i want you to keep this in the back of your mind for the rest of the presentation but also as you walk away from the presentation today because this is this is the last place you want to put all of your effort so number one um it's time to amp up the online networking now this would seem pretty obvious. I mean, everyone is 100% virtual, so it should be no surprise that networking is now going to be 100% virtual. If you were using LinkedIn before, that's awesome. 
I'm going to challenge you to actually turn up the volume. You probably, 99.9% um, .9 of job seekers I come in contact with, and I come in contact with a lot of job seekers, do not have the volume turned completely up on LinkedIn. If you weren't using LinkedIn before, this is a huge opportunity for you. Um, and you're going to absolutely get this huge benefit from LinkedIn in terms of applying that to your job search and your career. And you were definitely missing out on it before. So the long and short of it is that LinkedIn is the first place people go to find talent. So if you are not there and if you are not searchable, okay, so they want you to pay attention to this, you have to be searchable, you are going to be passed over for opportunities. So there are three ways to build your strategic network using LinkedIn. The first way is to focus on building your recruiter network. Now, recruiters are naturally kind of predisposed by the nature of their, their profession and kind of their personalities. They're pretty predisposed to networking. That's what they do. They talk to people. And what I'm hearing from my recruiter networks at this time is that they have a lot more downtime than usual because, you know, they're still looking to source talent. They're still working. But the, the hiring side, the hiring manager, um, that side has pretty much stopped. Okay, so the process has, has stopped. And so recruiters are, um, they're going to be a little bit more available to network if, if, um, if that's a network that you haven't tapped into. So you also want to think about kind of the short and the long term benefits of working with recruiters. Recruiters might not be in a position to hire you or um, not hire, but rather engage you in the hiring process right now. But if you are on the radar now and you have that kind of foundation, that foundational relationship established, then when hiring picks back up, when they have more roles on their plate for which they're recruiting, you will be on their radar. You will be someone that they will potentially get in touch with if you're a fit. So recruiter strategy is long term and short term always. It always depends on what role the recruiter is searching for at the time. But it's it's never a bad idea to to establish those relationships um, and, and kind of check back in once the, the market starts to turn. Another great benefit of connecting with recruiters and talking to recruiters is that this can increase your market intel. So recruiters they have a very good sense of what's going on in your industry. And, um, you know, especially now, they're going to be able to give you a wealth of information that you just would not have access to otherwise. So really valuable people to network with. Um, I do a whole entire course on recruiters, working with recruiters, networking with recruiters. You can never be connected to enough recruiters. I don't want you to say, you know, oh, OK, I have three recruiters I work with. That's it. No, you need to you need to be connected to a lot of recruiters because recruiters all recruit for different roles. So the recruiters you're connected to might not be connected to the roles that another recruiter is connected to. So tons of reasons to be connected to recruiters. But uh, the long and short of it is really find recruiters in your specific industry or recruiting for your specific role, especially if you're at the executive level, and then start to, to reach out and network. Uh, the second strategic opportunity comes with your current network. And if you've been on LinkedIn, you have this. So you don't have to go and build this. Uh, but you do have to re-explore and reanalyze your network and um, kind of just see where everyone where everyone is at these days. And um, I can almost guarantee this is going to produce some new networking opportunities for you within your current network. And now is the time to start build, building relationships, right? And so I have a story. I had a client, and um, as I will often do with my clients, is we jump on LinkedIn together, and we started searching in his target industry, and it turned out that there were, like, all these people that were in his network that he knew fairly well, um, that he had good relationships with, and but he had lost track of them. He had lost track of where his network had ended up over you know, the passing years. And he was just so surprised to see how many people he could re-engage for help, okay? So your most valuable assets could be right under your nose and you have no idea. And one tool I will encourage you to use is LinkedIn if you go into the privacy settings, LinkedIn um, allows you to actually download the archive of your entire network so that you will have an Excel spreadsheet of 
the names of your contacts, their titles at the, their companies, the companies that they're working in, and you can take this spreadsheet and just kind of go to town identifying uh, key contacts. But use this as a time to build those relationships. The third way to build your strategic network is by uh, generating new a new targeted network. And of course, I'm talking about cold outreach. And this is a good time to make cold outreach because uh, we all have one thing in common, right? We have the coronavirus in common. So it's, you know, before it might have been maybe intimidating to reach out to new contacts because you didn't really have a connection point. Um, how do you make a connection or conversation? We all have a common connection point right now. We can all relate to what's going on. And so you can even use what's going on right now is kind of, a, you know, an observation that you could make in your opening comments about how this is impacting the industry and really just use this as kind of a common connection point. So you want to start to develop your uh, brand new network on LinkedIn. And once you find these people, so you want to be looking for people who are in your target industries, in your target companies, you want to be scheduling informational interviews. If you are not scheduling multiple informational interviews a week, you are not doing your job. Okay, am I right? Because informational interviews, these are the things that open doors. Uh, it's connections, it's people that get people into companies, not so much the resume. The resume is, is one tool you have to use, but it's really that connection that makes the difference, especially if you're trying to pivot. So these are three areas you wanna be focused on. The second, uh, sort of area I want you to focus on is developing new skills, okay? What skills are you lacking that could make you a more desirable job candidate, okay? It's a question you should be asking yourself. So if you're a career changer um, or a re-entry person, you will typically have the toughest time landing new opportunities. And much of this is due to a lack of relevant current experience. So if this is you, now is a great time to top up skills for your target industry, your target target next job, that will allow you to become more relevant, okay? So this will then allow you, so if you've taken some online courses, you have these new skills, or you have um, at least, you know, you're developing these skills online, this will allow you to use those skills keywords in your branding. It allows you to use those skills keywords on your resume and your LinkedIn profile. And this is really key in terms of being found by recruiters and hiring managers searching for these skills keywords. Okay. So another thing this will do is it will help you develop or help you rather increase your confidence around entering a new industry or career path. So this can be a huge benefit for people going through a career change. If you're a non-career changer, you want to think about what underdeveloped skill set has been holding you back from a promotion. And if you developed a certain skill, you know, what skill would give you an edge, right? And there are a number of free or low cost resources out there that will allow you to kind of top up your skills. Um, one I would recommend is the LinkedIn learning platform. And I, uh, as a uh, a week ago, they were still offering a free month trial. So it could be something that you could check out um, and use for use for a month free if you're looking for low cost options. Um, YouTube, Udemy, um, these can be great for, uh, especially YouTube can be great for if you're trying to learn, like say you're trying to top up your, um, you know, Excel game. Say you want to learn how to do pivot tables or certain certain things in Excel. Um, there's a ton of people out there that do these, you know, free trainings on on YouTube. Um, if you're in a career where you've been kind of putting off a certification or a degree or something that is going to help your career um, move to the next level, now is a great time to start pursuing that certification. Uh, but I'm only talking about if that certification or degree is absolutely essential to get you to the next level in your career. So this is not a situation where um, you've always wanted to, um, you know, pursue maybe your project management certification, but you don't really need that in your future career. I'm, I'm referring more to things that are um, things you would see skills or requirements you would see on a job description 
and you would say, oh gosh, I, I'm not qualified to apply for that job because I don't have that certification. Those are the types of certifications I want you to pursue. Strategic branding, this is the third piece of the puzzle. It is the single most powerful tool you could use to position yourself as the best candidate for the job. Yet, it is one of the most overlooked opportunities by nearly every job searcher I encounter. Branding is not just updating your resume or setting up a LinkedIn profile. It is marketing at its finest. It is custom tailoring your experience across multiple platforms so that you are highly relevant to your target hiring managers. This will become even more necessary after the pandemic passes because the market will become more competitive. And if you were in the market for a job prior to COVID, you know that it was already very competitive. People expect to see a highly tailored brand. And if they don't see it, you will get passed, passed up. So what are some really focused branding actions, actions you can take advantage of during your downtime? Number one, focus on reinventing your brand, okay? Um, specifically, spend time on your career story, okay? You have to be able to clearly articulate your career story on paper and verbally. And so this is an area that I feel people uh, kind of breeze, breeze over, you know, in, in terms of their total kind of job search preparation and, and um, kind of career branding um, efforts. And it's really something that is so important. So I want you to um, take the time now to, to kind of top up that branding and um, think about your stories, you know, think about the stories that made you who you are in a professional sense. Uh, does the crisis, does, does the crisis add anything to your new, new to your story? So have you, do you work in a role where you're kind of on the front lines and you um, now have this new kind of branding piece to add that is going to be highly respected uh, amongst, amongst others? Um, the elevator pitch and interview stories. So it, when you interview, you need to have results oriented stories to uh, to express kind of your skills, your experience. And so have you taken the time to really plot out those stories and um, your elevator pitch, you know, as you conduct informational interviews, it's a great time to refine that and practice that so that people know exactly what it is that you do and how they can help you. Another important part of branding is having a keyword strategy. Okay, um, this is just super essential, especially in the world of, of online networking, online applications. Um, on LinkedIn, you have to be totally optimized for the search LinkedIn search engine. Um, so you want to make sure you have the best and strongest keywords as part of your resume, LinkedIn, you know, whole nine yards. One recommendation I would give is to start to take some time to analyze job specs for branding gems. So the job specs that you're targeting, the jobs you're targeting, they will have a ton of keywords that you should be using in your total brand profile. So you want to use that as sort of some inspiration, if you will, for how you reinvent your story um, and the specific words that you're going to be using. With LinkedIn, I want you to aim for total optimization. So LinkedIn is a combination, in order to be optimized, you have to have a combination of search engine optimization plus relevant career content, okay? So that's the keyword strategy comes into play there, but you also need to have certain parts of your profile really built out. And the parts that you wanna focus on are the headline, the about, about section, and the experience section. The headline is your most important LinkedIn asset because it's what compels people to enter into your profile or not. So if you haven't spent a whole lot of time creating a really concise, compelling headline, now's the time to do it. And then finally, you want to make sure your resume and your cover letter are up to trend. So I often come across uh, job seekers who have used the same resume over and over again, year after year, without kind of bringing it up to current standards. When this all passes and you're applying for jobs, against people who all things considered are pretty even in terms of experience 
if their resume is up to current and yours is not, they are gonna they're gonna have the edge. They're gonna be put to the the interview pile uh, far before you. So just to give you a real quick visual of what I'm talking about, um, we have an outdated resume on the left and a resume that's more on trend on the right. Okay, and you'll notice on the right hand resume we have the skills section um, in the first in the top half of the resume. And again, those skills keywords you know you want to incorporate those for ATS systems as well as recruiter scanning. The fourth item is putting the time for market research. Okay. This is the precursor to any successful job search. Most people, however, bypass this critical piece for the job board. I see it all the time. And if you want to have endless possibilities, significantly multiply the number of opportunities available for you, then research is a must. And as a headhunter, I can attest to it. And this is kind of where I use my headhunter approach in the job search. We did not just go out and start haphazardly looking for talent. Um, we really conducted our research. We knew what companies we were targeting. We knew which departments within those companies we were targeting. We had a very systematic approach to finding talent. And so you want to use the same kind of systematic approach for finding jobs. So some things to consider when you're doing research. So you want to take some time and identify growing industries because that's going to be where the hiring is happening once once this is all past us. You want to then create an exhaustive list of companies. OK, and the reason for this and I start with companies and not with jobs is that many companies do not post jobs on job boards. So how do you find out if and when they are hiring, right? The way you do this is you network inside those companies. So right now we have no visibility into the companies, you know, what companies are thinking about when they're going to start to hire again. However, if you are networking with someone in those companies, they're going to be a little bit closer to the information source. So I find the best way to organize your search is by finding as many companies as you can in your target space and in your target geographic range. And then using this, using the process of elimination until you find the right fit. Okay. You find the companies first, then you find your networking contacts based on the company. So once you find your companies and you go into LinkedIn, you find your networking contacts. You schedule informational interviews with those people, and that's how you get a foot in the door at these companies. Okay, so this is why research is so important. Just a couple tips. Um, some of you may know about these, but I'm, I'm going to share them for those of you who, who haven't considered this. Um, on LinkedIn, you can use hashtags to find very targeted information. So, for example, if you look at the top pink circle on my screen, I type hashtag hiring into the search box, and the second pink uh, circle uh, below it appears uh, hashtag hiring and you would follow that hashtag. Now you're going to have anyone who's talking about hiring on LinkedIn, you're going to have that um, sent into your LinkedIn feed. Another use for this hashtag is industries. So if you have certain industries you're targeting, type the hashtag the industry and now you're kind of curating really, um, really good intel to fuel your job search. Another um, website I came across that I think would be valuable for people researching, you know, company hiring status is candor.co. I believe it's a tech kind of tech recruiting company. And uh, the gentleman who founded this started uh, building a, a website that consists of live updates. You know, people, it's, it's kind of being crowdsourced by people who are in the hiring process um, or in these companies themselves. And there's an extensive list of companies. Um, you'll see at the top of the little dashboard, you can kind of sort that. And in the, the right hand column, you can see they say who's hiring, where the hiring freezes are happening, where the layoffs are happening. So this was another, I think, valuable resource that could help your help your market research as you look to find companies who might be hiring right now. The fifth and final place that you want to focus um, if you are in, you know, since we have all this time on our hands, right? is on getting clear on your career goals. And this is for someone who might feel a bit scattered in terms of where you want to go next. 
Um, I come across professionals like this all the time. Um, they, they know they have valuable skills, but they're just not sure where they can apply them. And they know that they don't want to stay in the same job or industry that they've been in. Now is a perfect time because you have time for gaining clarity around where to go next. Without clarity, okay, so this is a really important piece uh, to kind of start your job search with. Without this clarity, you will just continue to spin your wheels and eventually that leads to losing valuable momentum. So if you are in this place, I encourage you to start here before attempting any of the five prior action items. And the reason I wanna compel you to do this is that if you don't have clarity, you can't construct a proper brand. You can't construct a niche tailored brand. And if you can't construct a tailored brand, you, you are gonna completely reduce your chances of being hired. Hiring managers want the person who looks like they want the exact job they have, not someone who's scattered in three or four different places, okay? So one thing you would wanna start doing is researching career paths, okay? To start to find that clarity. You wanna reflect on your values, your passions, your goals, your strengths. Again, we have this time, take this time, use this time well to reflect. The end goal is that you wanna have confidence in where you're headed next, okay? So you wanna to come to some conclusions about actual companies, actual job titles that you wanna pursue next. Very important, only once you are clear can you tackle branding and skills building, okay? Without clarity, you should not be attempting these two uh, job search action items. You can, however, network or research without clarity, but your goal in both networking and researching should be exploration for reaching clarity. So the purpose of having informational interviews for you would be simply to learn more about that person's job. And once as a, as a goal for you know, the end of the conversation, you wanna have a sense of, you know, yes, I want to learn more about that type of job or talk to others doing that job because I think I wanna pursue it or no, I really don't wanna do that now that I've learned more about it. And then moving on to explore some other type of career path. All right, so there are some search deal breakers, uh, things you wanna watch out for as we, as we job search in this new normal. Number one, not following a daily search schedule. Um, this should be a pretty obvious one, um, but you know, I'll just, I'll, full disclosure, when, when this thing hit and we knew we were gonna be quarantined, uh, my husband and I signed up for Amazon Prime. We got all of this great binge watching in. We were staying up later, waking up later, and basically my schedule completely uh, went, went to pot. So the point is, you know, even though we're not kind of on, if you will, you want to treat your job search like like there is a sense of urgency. You do not want to wait until after COVID-19 to get started in your job search. That will be far too late. The activities we talked about today that you should be performing are all things that take time. So use this time to perform those activities. I said it earlier in the presentation, I'll say it again because it's so important, but you don't want to be scrolling on job boards all day long. Um, number one, they, I, I question how much of that, um, you know, if, if, there's stale, if there's stale job postings on there, um, you, you'll have a hard time discerning between the stale ones and the ones that are truly authentic in terms of hiring right now. And so you, um, they could be misleading, but also the job boards, they can just help you kind of lose steam quicker than if, and if you're doing networking activities or branding activities. So what I always tell my clients is you wanna minimize job board scrolling to 15 minutes a day max. It should just be to kind of get an assessment of, is there anything out there right now for me? What's the market doing? And then focusing more on the networking activities. Uh, keeping the news on, um, all day in the background or social media overdose. So <laughs> one of the most difficult disciplines in the job search is keeping your spirits up. The job search, and I've, I've been doing this a long time, the job search is all about mental game. If you lose steam, lose hope, lose confidence, lose positivity, you can forget it. Hiring managers and interviewers can smell that a mile away. And so now is the time where hiring managers are going to want people who can inspire others to reach for their best and people who are determined beyond all. So this is a time to really kind of drown out the things that might be bringing you down unknowingly 
and focus on the opportunity at hand. And so we covered a lot of ground. I hope it was helpful. I want to close uh, with just a few thoughts. So first, I want to challenge you. Uh, you know, I want to challenge you to change the way you look at this crisis relative to your career. And I want you to hold on to hope above all and really make an effort to change perspective on what lies ahead. Really try to change the way you look at things. You have the power to come out on top, okay? And sometimes we have to break down to break through. And no matter what happens, no matter what kind of difficulty you will endure through all of this, I believe that times like this allow us to come out the other end even stronger than before. But the power lies within. So what will you choose? Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate your time today. I guess we'll open it up for questions. But before we do so, I just want to share that um, I will be sharing a, a discount code to my Job Search Accelerator membership community uh, if that's something that speaks to you. And I'll be sharing that with Michelle later on this week um, for any, any of the webinar attendees if that's something of interest. So thank you very much. Noelle, thank you for all this great information and your engaging slides. Um, you've covered a lot of really good points. I think we all have some homework to do going back. Um, there was, let me pull out a couple of questions. Um, there was a question about cover letters and whether they're required. Sure. Um, so cover letters um, will be required depending on, on what the job uh, posting is asking for. So um, I always say they're really, they're nice to have. So it's, um, there's, let me, let me rewind. So cover letter, cover letters are required um, for different scenarios. Uh, when you're working with a recruiter and if you're reaching out to recruiters, I do not recommend sending cover letters because um, just based on my experience as an executive recruiter, we did not, you know, we did not read cover letters. We were more interested in seeing the candidate's resume. When you're applying for jobs online, or if you're submitting a, uh, a job via email to a hiring manager, then I think cover letters are a good idea because it's an extra opportunity to sell yourself. And compared to the person who applies that doesn't include a cover letter, it's gonna give you a little bit of an edge. So not everyone is going to read them. Um, maybe maybe the hiring manager is not going to read the, the cover letter, but you have nothing to lose by submitting it. So if in, in the case that they will read it, you now have an edge. So that's typically my policy on cover letters. Great. Um, one question was, if you had a short job um, before COVID hit and you got laid off, how should you handle that with your resume? Hmm. So I, I might need to know a little bit more information, but it would a lot of it would depend on whether that job was relevant to where you're going next. Um, Sometimes it would depend on what that job was. So was it a, you know was it a side gig? Was it a consulting gig? Was it an actual kind of salary job? And then it only lasted a, a few months. So it would kind of all depend on how how that's framed and, and, and the type of job it was. Um, if it's relevant to where you're going next, you want to include that on your resume. Um, you also, if it, if it filled a gap on your resume, also go to include. And then the key will be just figuring out how you brand that based on where you're going next. Great. And how do you, you when you talked about outdated resumes, what, what are some good ways to find find what your resume should look like right now? Sure. The the first part of the question when you read it, it you got cut off a little. Could you please repeat that? Um, um, so you talked about sort of outdated styles of resumes. Um, what's a good way to find out some some styles or formats to use? Sure. So there is a ton of resumes, uh, resume samples and templates out there available on the internet. Um, I know within the My Career Accelerator, I have two templates that uh, my members can access. If you're, if you do a simple Google search for resume templates, you'll get, you'll get a ton that pop up. But the things you want to look for is you want to make sure that the resume that you're using is ATS optimized 
so even, even Google searching ATS optimized resumes, um, you want to stay away from highly design heavy resumes. So these, there's a lot of companies out there that are creating resume templates that look really amazing. I mean, given my choice between kind of a best practices resume and one that is highly stylized, I love the look of the highly stylized ones. However, those are often not ATS optimized. So if you find you have a resume where there's like a lot of graphics and it looks really modern and cool and um, there's like images on it, typically those things are not ATS optimized and they can even end up um, inadvertently throwing your resume into the trash. So you just want to make sure the resume template you're using is ATS optimized. That would be the number one. Great. And how do you how do you figure out whether employers value online certificates and maybe even online versus live programs? Well, best the best indicator into a hiring manager's mind is always going to be the job description. Okay, job descriptions are highly underrated, uh, but they're such a wealth of information because usually the hiring manager has a hand in approving it, writing it, they're involved somehow in putting this job description together because they want to find someone who reads it and is a fit for that job description. So if there is a job description that, or um, excuse me, a, a certification or a skill that they would value, you would they would usually indicate that in the job description, okay? Great. Um, let's just see. Um, any other tips related to applicant tracking systems? Oh, um, we don't have time for a whole other one <laughs> webinar. <laughs> right, right. I teach like entire courses on this stuff. Um, I think. Let's see. Any tricks? Um, well, if you go to my blog and you type in ATS. Um, applicant tracking systems in the search bar. I have a couple blog posts that specifically address, you know, kind of certain standards you want to pay attention to for ATS systems. ATS systems um, are all slightly different in terms of the algorithm. Um, they're complex. So there's not like, you know, um, there's not like some sort of tried and true like checklist, if you will, that will cover every single item you know around how an ATS is um, scanning and delivering content but um, you want to just be sure that you employ good keyword strategy because they parse keywords um, you want to keep the resume fairly clean and scannable you don't want to have a lot of tables images things like that um, another tip is um, you know, if you're using, for example, um, like shortened versions of words. Um, so, for example, if you use like a, let's see, a CPA, um, you want to spell that out as well. Or PM, you want to spell out project manager. So that, depending on what keywords are being searched, that you're popping up for both of them. So those are just a couple <laughs> ATS tips. Um, but there's a ton of information. And like I said, if you go to my blog, um, I do a lot of blogging about resumes and there's a lot of ATS content on there as well. Great, and I'm gonna give you just one last question. Um, for those that might be looking at work that doesn't, where that's new for them, that doesn't, they don't have as much experience, what are just a couple of tips of how to approach your resume? So, a couple tips I would give if you're you're so you're pursuing work, you don't have a ton of experience in that that field. Um, number one, don't rely too heavily on your resume. I know we've all been trained to believe that the resume is kind of the end all for landing jobs, but is simply one tool in the process. So I really encourage people who are making career changes or shifts um, into something where they're going to be doing it at something totally new, your resume in that case is not going to be your strongest selling tool. So don't overuse it, okay? Don't 
rely just on online applications because your chances are going to be very slim. Instead, you want to focus on the assets you do have. You want to focus on your personality and your communication abilities um, in terms of selling yourself. And you want to do that through networking. I always tell people, you know, people hire people they like. They do not, they do not hire resumes. So if you are networking and you're building relationships and you're building rapport with people and they like you, they're going to be more willing to vouch for you. They're going to be more willing to pass your resume through versus your resume getting stuck in an ATS system. So I really can't encourage you strong enough to kind of, yes, get the resume as tailored as possible, um, gain the skills that will allow you to add them to your resume so that you can, again, get that resume very tailored and kind of keyword matched to the job description. But don't put all your eggs in that basket because your job landing opportunities are going to come through networking. Great. Well, thank you again, Noel. This was you covered tremendous information and that's so critical to those of us who are here um, and working on their careers and job search during this uncertain time. I greatly appreciate your willingness to present with us and share such good information. And thanks to all of you that joined us. Um, we are looking for more programs like this, so feel free to share ideas with me about what would be helpful to you. And know that Northeastern Alumni Relations will continue to be providing both content um, and webinars um, to support you going forward. Uh, so many thanks again, and I look forward to being in touch. Thanks again, Noelle. Thank you. Take care.